Welcome to the OnlyFans Secrets Marketing Podcast. The goal of this podcast is to help both new and established OnlyFans creators learn the basics of online branding, marketing, and promotion to help you make more money with your content and maximize your time online. My name is Richard Lewis, and I have over 20 years of internet marketing experience. So let's get started with today's topic. And that topic is how to get more OnlyFans subscribers. Okay, so we've been building up to this episode of the podcast for a while now. Uh, The main goal of all the marketing and promotion efforts I've talked about on the podcast are, of course, about getting more subscribers to your OnlyFans page. In this episode, I'm going to break down the core elements to know about OnlyFans to gain more subs, a daily task list, and 10 places your next OnlyFans subscribers are hiding. So let's jump right in. So what are the core fundamentals to remember to get subscribers? Number one would be to remember that OnlyFans is a fan site, not an adult site. So this is an argument I've made a lot on this podcast and on my blog It's basically just breaking it down that the site is dedicated to the concept of fans. So, you know, the people that are going to subscribe to you and give you money, they are interested in you. So, yes, they're interested in the content that you're producing. But when you break it down, it's more about you than it is the content. So basically, it's like a person is joining your fan club, you know, not just buying your pictures and videos. If someone wants to just purchase pictures and videos, there are a lot of places that they can do that in an impersonal way. So when you're looking at how you're setting up your OnlyFans page, is your OnlyFans page just basically about trying to sell pictures and videos, or is it about creating a fan club experience for those people who are subscribing to you? So, you know, remembering that there are millions and millions of free pictures and videos online. So they aren't necessarily buying those. They are buying into you. They are buying into the brand of you. So the big takeaway there would be making sure that you're setting up your OnlyFans page in a way like it is a fan club. In a way that it is a place that someone would go because they are interested in you. Yes, they're interested in the content that you're producing. And you should make sure to make it interesting and exciting as possible. But you want to make sure that the theme is about you and about them. So in a fan club, it's both. It's like, it's not just about what you want to produce. It's about what the people who are your fans are going to want to see. That's going to be a lot of interaction. It's going to be possibly a lot of customization. Hopefully that means, you know, some live streams for your most important fans or fans that are tipping the most. Anything that you can do to set up your page in a way that promotes those people who are your fans you're going to see more subscribers from. Okay, so number two, I want you to think like a stripper, not like an adult star. So basically, I break this down as, you know, everyone knows why men go into a strip club. Usually they go into a strip club because it's a bachelor party, that they're hanging out with their buddies, they're going with a group of guys, Uh, they might be out of town on business and they need something to kill some time. But the real question is, why do they go back to a strip club? Why do they go back in there? They go back in because of the connection they end up having with one stripper, one exotic dancer. And, you know, most people who are strippers would attest that they make most of their money from regulars, not from the majority of the people who see them in the club. They're going to make a certain amount of money from being up and dancing, 
but the majority is going to come from what they refer to as regulars. So basically, when you're setting up your OnlyFans page, think of it that way. You're going to make the majority of your money from certain people who are regulars, people who not just subscribe, but then they end up tipping a lot or they end up commenting and engaging a lot on your page. The concept with an adult star and and why a lot of people who are amateurs end up doing a lot better on OnlyFans and people who are more established is because of a mindset that says, you know, I'm used to making a certain amount of content. Let's say I make a piece of content and that is a product and that product ends up getting sold. And then I need to go make another piece of content and get that product sold. But that's just not how OnlyFans works because it works more like a regular coming into a strip club and wanting to see that same person over and over again. People who just want to go in and see a myriad of different people, those are the sort of people who will just make free, you know, Google searches or go on to specific websites and look at as many videos as they can. But they're not the sort of people who are going to want to have a connection with that one content creator. So you definitely want to have that mindset in your mind and, you know, target your regulars, target people to become regulars, to be invested in you, invested in your personality and invested in your content. That's going to allow you to get more OnlyFans subscribers. So number three, don't neglect your social media. Okay, so there's a lot of people out there who are like, how can I succeed at OnlyFans without social media? You certainly can. But it makes it a lot easier if you have social media because your social media creates implied value for your brand. Now remember, you are your brand. So if you have what's implied value, it basically means that if someone sees that you have a hundred thousand followers on TikTok or a million views on YouTube or uh, 200,000 followers on Twitter, this is implied value that you don't have to convince anyone of. It's already just out there. So when someone sees that, they're going to make that connection and say, okay, all these other people like this content creator, there must be something worth liking. So the more people who follow you on social media, the more popular you seem and people will be more likely to join, as I mentioned, your fan club. So your fan club source is only fans. That's the place where you're trying to move everyone to. But that isn't the only location that people who are your fans are going to want to hang out in. Everyone has their favorite social media platform. They have places they like to congregate. A lot of the people who are on Reddit would never go on Twitter. The people on TikTok might never go on Reddit, etc. So you're basically moving all of these people along, no matter where they happen to want to congregate, over to your main fan club source, which is OnlyFans. So the more that you put on your social media as well, the more content that you're consistently posting, that also is going to put into people's minds that you are going to be posting just as much on your OnlyFans page, if not more. So recently, uh, someone joined uh, OnlyFans from Instagram and got a lot of publicity because they just basically shoved all of their uh, Instagram pictures onto only fans. And so people were saying, okay, well, why would I buy from, you know, this person? Because I'm basically just getting the same pictures that were existing on Instagram. But because they saw that this content creator was constantly posting on Instagram, they made that natural leap forward that they were going to get a consistent amount of content on OnlyFans. So they went ahead and subscribed. So although that person didn't do it correctly, they did show the concept of implied value, 
which means that the person thought, oh, okay, I can go ahead and subscribe because this person has been consistently posting on Instagram, so they likely will post on OnlyFans. Now, you want to do that in the correct way, but you want to go ahead and utilize that implied value concept with your social media. So if you basically just jump on OnlyFans because you were you got people from your social media and now you're only spending your time on OnlyFans and you're not supporting your social media efforts, you're basically hurting yourself. So you want to make sure that your social media is kept up because that is going to be the source of new fresh fans who are going to want to join your fan club. All right, and then number four, don't defeat yourself. This is a big one. Uh, You know, there is just a ton of burned out people that I talk to, that I read, uh, you know, on different forums. It's difficult to consistently produce content, to market, uh, to take setbacks. But you should be, you know, as aware as possible that you're going to have these kind of setbacks. But and you're going to have to just say, I'm going to put myself out there as much as possible anyway. The big concept to understand, you're in business. And it's not personal, as they say, it's just business. And there is, you know, it is not really real rejection. So if, if you're putting yourself out there and every single time someone doesn't want to subscribe to your OnlyFans or they aren't interested in you, you take it personally and you start defeating yourself over it, it just means you didn't go to the right well. It means you're not in the right place. You might be trying to sell, you know, steak to a vegan. You know, you might just not be in the right area. You might go next door and there's a lot of meat eaters over there and they're interested in purchasing. You know what I mean? So just don't take things, you know, personally when it comes to business. This is business. So there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. And you need to end up tapping a lot of, I make an analogy, you know, where if you want to dance, you have to tap on a lot of uh, shoulders. And I say you have to tap on a lot of shoulders sometimes to be successful. Not everyone is going to want to dance with you. And, you know, letting fear of rejection stop you will only hurt your bottom line. And certainly I've had a whole episodes of the podcast about taking breaks, about preventing burnout. So definitely check those out. I don't expect anyone to be a, just a nonstop marketing and promotion and content creating machine out there. You know, you definitely have to take some breaks. And if you do end up feeling defeated, you know, that's the time. There's two ways of, of going about at that point. Double down on your effort or take a break. Those are pretty much the only, because if you just keep going in the same direction that you've been going, you're going to end up with the same results. So you're just going to continue to feel burned out. So really, there's only two ways to uh, approach that. You say, hey, I'm going to double down and work twice as hard, or you just kind of need to take a little breather and back off. Okay, so the next part is I wanted to go over is to, you know, a daily task list for, you know, gaining subs. And just making sure that all of these, these are the things you just need to do on a daily basis to make sure that you're gaining more subs for your OnlyFans. All right, number one would be choose your best pictures and videos for promotion promotion the next day. So number two would be schedule as much of your promotion content for posting the next day. So again, you're doing this daily. You're making sure that you're ahead. You're not worrying about posting that day for that day. This is about scheduling and making sure that you're ahead, both of these, the day before, that you have everything as far as your content and your and your promotion all done. Preferably, you would have it all scheduled in your social media, if possible, scheduled for your OnlyFans. All, almost all sites now have, you know, schedule for later kind of systems. Preferably, you want to do that. All right, number three would be respond to comments and likes from the previous day's posts. Now, for a lot of people, you might just stop working at five o'clock or you might have another job that you have to do. So that means that you are behind when you get in to finally look at your OnlyFans, your social media. You have to look at the day before. That means the stuff that came in from the time you stopped working (laughs) 
That's what you 